So let's just think about our two organizations. We're gonna start thinking about diagnostic and analytical tools that help us to audit and assess progress towards existing strategic aims and objectives. And I think what we'll probably do is go for about 20 minutes. And I think that means we haven't taken much break. That would be a good time to, for us to uh, maybe just recap very quickly and, uh, 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 and jump off until next week's session. McDonald's, think about McDonald's. Let's find a little bit better about McDonald's. But I guess McDonald's are pretty famous for their, for their planning in their own rights. But I don't want to do this here. But one of the things that we can actually do is quite easily, because they are so, so famous and because we all know McDonald's, we could sit there and review and deter and, and look at their strategic aims and objectives. We could probably find, well, we can find most of it on the website, on their website and documentation. McDonald's is one of the leading global fast food service retailers, and it's got more than 32,000 restaurants. They serve more than 60 million company, people in 117 countries every single day. We all know it. It's well known for some of its much desired food, like chicken McNuggets, a Big Mac. I even had a Big Mac in Bangkok yesterday. Egg McMuffins and all these types of things all around the globe. 75% of its chains are owned by franchisees and 25, only 25 of McDonald's uh, outlets are 25%, are sorry, of McDonald's outlets are actually owned by the company. In 1967, it opened its first international outlet in Canada. And uh, most of its, of its outlets are freestanding units. You know, what are they known for? What are we going to find in their mission statement? Well, you know what? It's been known for providing outstanding quality, quick service and cleanliness and value to its customers. And that's what McDonald's set out to do. That's what you'll find in the McDonald's strategy documentation. And you know, let's not get too hung up on whether a, in a planning process, whether something fits into necessarily the box of mission or the doc, box of vision or the box of purpose. The important thing is that people understand it, but set, McDonald's are set out to really provide outstanding quality, quick service, cleanliness, and value in obviously a very, very highly, um, very, very highly uh, competitive market. You know what? They've also set out with very clear strategic aims and objectives, which haven't really changed too much over time. McDonald's has clearly defined its strategic aims and objectives. The vision of McDonald's is, be to, is to be the world's elite. Sorry, I'll no, read it exactly. The, the vision of McDonald's is to be the leading, quick, and best fast food service provider all over the world. So there we have McDonald's vision. We want to be the leading quick and the best fast food service provider all over the world. How are we going to do this? We're going to do this by objectives, but also, sorry, by, by our mission, but also other objectives. So other objectives of McDonald's to maintain and develop the best quality food products in the quick service restaurant market. You know, none of us work in the work for McDonald's, but we can, we can um, recognize this. We can understand this. McDonald's also wants to lead the quick service restaurant industry by attracting new customers, opening more profitable restaurants, increasing its sales through promotion that enable them to continue the program of expansion. And look how successful that has been. Their goal is to maximize profits, maintain its competitive advantage by constantly creating new products, to add to its menu, which will help to attract new customers and satisfy their existing customers. That gives customers a reason to visit McDonald's often. So there's their breakdown. There's McDonald's breakdown straight away. It's vision. The leading quick and best food service provider all over the world. One of their objectives is to maintain and develop the best quality food products in the quick service restaurant market. They also want to lead the quick service restaurant by attracting new customers, opening more profitable restaurants, increasing sales through promotion 
to enable us to continue our program expansion. How are we going to do that? What's our goal? Well, our goal is to maximize profits, maintain competitive advantage by constantly creating new products and adding to our menu, which will help attract new customers and also satisfy existing customers. And then we break down from that into a load of policies as well. But as you can see, the cascade working there. Coming into fraction, we've, their vision is clear. So as long as their stakeholders can relate to that, their staff can relate to that, their leaders can relate to that, the rest of it really falls out as a pyramid as we go down, but it's very, very clear to us. And, you know, we could sit here together very easily. And in fact, we did, on, we did so on one of my previous sessions. We could very much sit here between us here and pretty much come up with a SWOT analysis of McDonald's. Won't do that here because we haven't got enough time, but, but um, you know, it's a very useful exercise. But, you know, we understand even as lay people, you know, even people on the outside, we pretty much, now we know their strategy. Now we know their vision. You know, if we think about a, a SWOT analysis, well, we know their market. It's very competitive. It's international. The opportunities in fast food and blah, blah, blah. You know, strengths in terms of their people, their process, and all this type of thing. So it's not actually that hard to capture. But how do we start to evaluate component parts of a strategic plan? Well, strategic planning is a very important business activity, as we've said, and it's used to achieve certain goals and objectives. An organization sometimes summarizes its goals and objectives into a mission statement and a vision statement. Vision is basically a long-term view. And sorry for the repeat here, but, but I think it's quite important. Basic vision is basically a long-term view, which outlines what an organization needs to be in the future and also describe how the organization wants the world in which it operates. The vision basically concentrates on the future and provides the decision-making criteria. Remember about the rollout to the organization. Whereas the mission defines the basic purpose of the existing, this the existence of, of an organization. The mission also defines about the desired level of performance needed in order to achieve the organizational aims and objectives. We've seen it, the vision of McDonald's is to be the best and the leading fast food provider all over the world. McDonald's have said that. There are five ways of judging the suitability of an organizational vision. The first one, is foresight, which tells whether the vision of an organization is strong enough and realistic. There's no point in having a vision that isn't realistic. So we need to understand that we have a vision that is strong enough. Is it compelling? And also, is it realistic? When the vision of McDonald's is evaluated, it is clear enough that it is strong enough as well as realistic. McDonald's approved that. And the same goes for every organization. Let's start to think about factors that will affect that strategic plan. Well, there are certain factors that McDonald's Corporation need to look at in shaping the strategies that can't be ignored. These factors, think about the, the amount of countries that McDonald's operate in, political, economical, and social factors. They all affect McDonald's. Even just think about now, during COVID-19, many McDonald's across the world are either closed or they're just doing takeaway only. It's as simple as that. The political factors affect an organization in difficult ways and different ways, like the international operations at McDonald's are highly influenced by individual state policies enforced by us, each government. Different countries focus on different areas of concern like worker protection, health, the environment. Think about all the factors that an organization like McDonald's in carrying out and working towards its vision need to take into account. All of these elements are in control of government and considers, and the government considers when giving the license of a restaurant in different countries. Very, very complex. Different organizations in the fast food industry have their individual concerns involving economic factors. So we need, again, think about political, economical, and social factors. 
The different branches in the franchises of McDonald's have the tendency to experience difficulties where the economy of certain countries hit by the inflation and the changes in the exchange rate. So a very, very complex picture emerges when organizations operate in so many different countries. What can we do to audit our progress towards our strategic, strategic aims and objectives? Well, the marketing audit is very essential for an organization as it provides the background strategic analysis that supports decision-making process and also tells us the current position of the organization. We talked about this earlier on, the SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. One of the auditing tools that are used to analyze the internal as well as the external factors of an organization that are favorable and unfavorable to achieve the objectives of an organization. In the context of that, in the context of the SWOT analysis, just think about it. Think of McDonald's for a second. The biggest strength of McDonald's is its large market share, its strong brand image and reputation, strong financial performance, and the position in the food industry. Friendly environment for customers and the practice of going green has made it possible for McDonald's to gain more fame all around the world. Now, if we'd sat back and thought that, we would have probably said it. Strengths of McDonald's, market share, strong bank brand image. We all know what the M is when we see it. What are the golden arches? <laughs> uh, we know the reputation. We know about the financial performance and their position in the food industry. But also, McDonald's has its McDonald's has its weaknesses. It has its threats. The weak, what are the weaknesses of McDonald's? Well, it's been shown we've had to face certain legal action because of using trans, trans fat and beef oil that can negatively affect its brand image. You know, McDonald's isn't necessarily known as the best, providing the best healthy food. That's another weakness. It offers a variety of junk food. And as we know, the world is becoming more um, defensive against or less receptive of junk food. And junk food is considered unhealthy among a lot of people and also at losing customers due to the increase of competition. So there's been a lot of increase of competition in McDonald's from other burgers, other fast food places, but also different producers, you know, also different products, alternative products, more healthy products, perhaps. And that's why if we see now when we go into McDonald's, we can see a salad, we can see more healthy food available on the menu. And that's really because they've had to adapt their strategy towards that. And remember what we're talking about in terms of changing strategies makes a lot of sense, right? What else might change organizational strategy? Well, stake, stakeholders, of course, but stockholders, like stockholders, stakeholders, stakeholders like top management, customers, suppliers, they all influence the organizational strategies in different ways. And if we don't think of them, we don't think about customers, we don't think about the supply chain, we don't think about our people, we are going to get our strategy wrong. So top management should establish a superior strategic decision process throughout the company so that the strategies can evolve and flourish consistently over time. All the strategic preferences that increase the value for both the customers and shareholders are highly desirable and should increase the growth of any organization. And they all make mistakes. Well, we talked about fa failing fast. McDonald's had to quickly redraw its 55 cent hamburger campaign. Why? Because it separated franchise, franchise without creating new customer loyalty or demand. It was costly to them. It's costly to the franchises, but, and the withdrawal of it was even more costly, but necessary decision to avoid firmer damage to stakeholder value or to shareholder value. Conflict arises when the manager forced, 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 faced choice, when the management faced choices that involve real trade-offs between the customer and the shareholder value. 
at the end of the day, shareholder value is really important, right? And if a proposal to increase customers or customer value will reduce the shareholder value, then it makes sense that that proposal be rejected. So again, we have to think about the stakeholders, the various stakeholders, whoever they are, and what decisions will do in terms of doing that. 55 cent hamburger campaign, it would have reduced shareholder value. Why? Because it was 55 cent hamburger. And it didn't help the finance, it didn't support the franchises either. It separated them, it created conflict. And they, as a result, they had to pull out of that market. So McDonald's also need to continuously analyze, interpret, and produce a structured evaluation of the organizational strategic plan. The challenges that McDonald's faces are as the food company is continuously growing, competitors are entering into the market with competitive prices, not only internationally, but domestically. Think about it, Burger King. Uh, lots of local players, Jollibee, Philippines, lots of fast food places in lots of different countries. And eating pattern, sorry. So as competitors come in, of course, McDonald's can lose competitive customers as well as its market share. The other difficulty that they're facing is the increasing awareness about the food and the importance of a balanced diet nowadays. People are acting for low calorie food. So this is why in some countries you're starting to see these menus change in McDonald's. Again, they've adapted their strategy around an adapting environment, a changing environment. Customers changing their eating patterns by consuming less fast food and this is because there are competitors that provide the low calorie food at prices almost the same at McDonald's. And due to this, McDonald's can lose customers. But McDonald's can achieve competitive advantage by using three generic strategies that we've talked about. Cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. And that has really been the heart of McDonald's strategies through and through. Cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. The competitive advantage can be achieved by differentiating the products from those of competitors. And McDonald's is differentiated in itself by its brand name and the brand images of the Big Mac and also Ronald McDonald. So it's something we're all very, very familiar with, but, you know, some of the fundamental, whilst their fundamental vision hasn't changed over time, some of their strategic activities have had to change over time in order to maintain their market position as to where they are in the market right now. 